All right. Welcome back to the second part of One Man's Faith. We are, we are beginning a new series looking at the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith, and that's found in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. But having the same spirit of faith according to what is written. All right. And now we're looking at the context of what Paul is talking about here. And he goes back, we go back to verse 5. He says that we don't preach ourselves, we preach Christ. And God has said, light will shine out of a darkness. And uh, it is the, he's shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. And then he steps down and he says, we, ha we have this treasure, this treasure, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, the light that, that is shining out of our hearts. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, clay pots, things that can break. But it's going to be the surpassing greatness of the power will be from God and not from ourselves. You see, if we'll understand that, yes, we are fragile, yes, we can break, but God wants to work in us. God wants to use us. He wants to produce the manifestation of His Spirit through us. And Paul is, Paul is talking about these things. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing. This is verse 8, verse 9. Persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body of the dying of Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. God has chosen you so the world can see the contrast between the frailty of humanity and the treasure of Jesus and the good news so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be from God. Smith Wigglesworth said, I am a thousand times bigger on the inside than on the outside. Isn't that neat? I'm a thousand times bigger. You're a thousand times bigger on the inside than the outside because God's power is working within you. And then, and then he says, listen, but hey, we're afflicted, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not despairing. In other words, hey, you can't get rid of me. You may throw things at me. That's all right. That's all right. I'll take it. I remember um, uh, in um, uh, Captain America, when, uh, yeah, I sometimes look at, at action stuff like that. In, in Captain America, uh, Steve, oh, I forgot what his last name is. He, he was the guy that became Captain America. He went, before he became, he was a frail being. He went, he went over and over and over again into, into the induction centers to try and get into the Army. This was during the World War II. And he never made it. And, and one time he was, at, um, uh, he was at a pub or something, and one guy was talking bad about America or, or, or what we're doing, things like that. And he kept saying, hey, shut up. Hey, you don't know what you're talking about. Hey, we're doing a good thing. And the guy took him outside and started to beat him up. And every time he hit him, he would come back up and say, hey, is that all you got? Hey, I can do this all day. You know? That's what, you know, that's what Paul is saying here. Yeah, you may be perplexed. You, you may be afflicted. It doesn't matter. You're not going to get rid of us. You're not going to get, so world, listen, you're not going to get rid of us. See, this, we're a fungus among us. Even, even, even in places like China, even though they try to squash the church, it rises up. It grows greater you can't put out the light. You can't put out the light. It, it is there. And, he, uh, and then he says uh, in verse 11, he says, For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. But having the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore also we speak. As it is written, 
You see that in verse 13? According to what is written. Where, what is written? Where does this come from? Well, to find out, let's flip over to Psalms 116. Psalms 116. I've said it several times in the past, but Psalms is not a book of songs. It is the Word of God. And there are many quotes out of Psalms in the rest of the Word, especially in the New Testament. Especially in the New Testament. There are, I think, 10 or 15 quotes from Psalms just in the book of Hebrews alone. Many of them quoted Psalms. And so get the, don't get it in your head that that oh it's poetry you know you know oh it doesn't it doesn't have any meaning oh no this the book of psalms has great spiritual significance in our lives and you can see it by the way it was quoted uh, especially especially in the new testament by jesus by paul by the writer of hebrews they 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 were they were constantly quoting out of Psalms. So if we go to Psalms uh, 116, it starts with, I love the Lord because He hears my voice and my supplications, because He has inclined His ear to me. Therefore I shall call upon Him as long as I live. The cords of death encompass me, the terrors of Sheol or hell came upon me. I found distress and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech Thee, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is compassionate or love, loving. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For thou has rescued my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 10, I believed when I said, or as it's, 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 it's what he said in, in, uh, in uh, first, second Corinthians, uh, I believe, therefore I said, he said, and that's where this is coming from. I believed when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all men are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me. The whole, the, the psalm is about what God can do for me. As I, he says, because he inclined my ear to me, therefore I will call upon him. He's, he's, he's saying that gee, whenever I speak to God, he hears me. That's an important concept. Don't think that there's a tin roof over your head. Now, if you're not in God's Word, there's going to be a little bit of a, a problem. That's why we've got to know God's Word and get into God's Word. Because that's when He hears us. That's when He really hears us. As we're, as we're walking that straight path. Now it doesn't mean every time you sin, He's not going to, he's not going to that, he, that if you sin, He's going to turn His back on you. I don't mean that. No, no, no. No, but if your lifestyle is one walking away from God until you repent, your prayers are hindered. Men, if you're treating your wives wrong, your prayers are really hindered. Your prayers are really hindered. Ephesians says, husbands, love your wives. He didn't say, husbands, love your wives only when they submit. He said, husbands, it doesn't matter what your wife does. Love her. And we're to love her as Jesus loves us. And if you want the understanding of love, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8 especially, will tell you what love really is. For God so loved you, Agape love, and that's what 1 Corinthians 13 talks about, that He sent His only Son. 
And Jesus' relation with the church is such that he gave himself for the church. That was his love, and that's the love you and I are to have to our spouses. If you want God to hear, then let's get into the Word. Find out what the Word says. He says that even the cords of, of death encompassed me in verse 3. The terrors of Sheol came upon me. I found distress and sorrow, and then I called upon the Lord. Oh, Lord, beseech me, save my life. And then he says, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is compassionate. The word is racham, which means to love. Yes, our God loves. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. He's saying, Lord, spirit, I mean, soul, don't be in turmoil anymore. Get off these jitters and all this stuff because God has dealt bountifully with me. Bountifully. He just didn't deal a little bit. He dealt bountifully with me. For then I can say, and I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed when I said, I am greatly afflicted. But God, God was with me. Paul is looking into the Word and finding comfort and faith from what has happened to another believer, David. This is a psalm of, this is a psalm probably from David. Normally mine says that, but, but it, doesn't, it doesn't say who wrote this one. We'll just assume it was David uh, in this case, since there was no other, since there is no other name. Uh, but Paul found comfort, and we can find comfort in just, just in what we just looked at. Oh man, I was in trouble, but God, I called out to you and you heard me and you saved me and I'm walking now among the living. We have the same spirit of faith that David had. And we are going to believe that we will be delivered just as David was. God will deliver us. Amen? That's a good place to stop for our second break. So... Let's take a pause for the cause, and I'll be right back. <laughs> 